Crafting is a staple mechanic of every survival game, and because it's a core mechanic of Elixir Punk, I want to get into the game as soon as possible. Unfortunately, crafting systems involve UI work, and anything having to do with UI work makes me want to kill myself, then revive myself so I can kill myself again. There are a million different ways to go about designing a crafting system. You can do a Minecraft style with a grid, a Terraria style with slots, disgusting mess like the AAA games. I took inspiration from the Terraria style slot system because I think it makes crafting less intrusive on the players and also because it allows for discovery of items and recipes simply by having them in your inventory. I'm making a cross between a survival game and a tower defense game where you gather your materials to craft your towers and build defenses around your portal. The game is written in Zig with the help of a graphics library called Raylib if that sounds like a cup of tea. So subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on the progress of the game. So let's talk shop for a minute. I mentioned in the last video that I'm working on an alpha build of the project. Here are all the systems and mechanics we're going to need to get a version of the game shipped and into our first testers hands. So without further ado, let's jump into crafting. So first we have to create recipes for the game to use. We create a struct like this. Something to take note of is that for the recipes themselves, you have to allocate memory on the heap to access recipes out of scope of the initialization function. Then we further have to reference the recipe from the item that it's created from with a pointer because you can't have a struct that includes itself, even if it's part of another struct. All this means is that after we create the recipe, we have to grab a pointer to the recipe we just created and then add that to the item itself so we can look up the recipe to craft the item from the item itself. Pretty handy when you're working with lots of items. Anyways, as with the inventory itself, there are a lot of things to think about when it comes to crafting. For example, what happens if the player has all the items needed, but they're not in the same slot? Do the items get added to the inventory automatically, or does the player have to place it themselves? Which slots do the items get added to? I decided that I wanted to get a basic version of the system in place and then iterate it on it later. I want to add things like shift clicking to add all to your inventory or holding down the mouse and letting it add to itself, but those things will have to come later. They're simply quality of life changes. A shift clicking wasn't even added until Minecraft until past like beta 1.8 or something like that. So after I got the basics of the system in place, it was time to start drawing things to the screen. I started by just getting the recipes and their items created to be drawn into slots above the player's inventory. I'm not sure if the crafting block will stay here, but it feels like an okay spot for right now. Then I got to work on being actually able to create a new item. This code that I'm writing here creates a memory leak, by the way. I still haven't fixed that. Basically, the item I created goes onto the heap because it has to exist outside of the lifetime of this function where it gets created. It's definitely not the best way to do this kind of thing, but hey, this is past me we're talking about, and that guy is a bit of a retard. Anyways, here's a clip of me figuring that all out. The fuck? Oh, because it's null. Fuck. After I got that sorted and got dragging and creating items working, it was time to move on to removing items from the player's inventory on craft. Huh. Okay. That ain't right. And then once that was fixed, well... Okay, that should do it. Huh? Beautiful. Okay. And now... Oh, son of a bitch. After that, it got me thinking about the ability to swap items if their IDs are not the same. Well, that's all well and good, except this led to the most bizarre bug that I've ever had the displeasure of encountering. Looking back on it, it was such a stupid thing to miss, but it led to around three days of writing debug strings in every single function related to the crafting system several times over. Here's past me to explain. Okay, look at this fucking horse shit here. So, I want to swap the items, right? So, when you release the mouse, if there's already an item in the slot, you just overwrite it and swap the items. Put the item that's in the mouse, that's on, that's on the mouse, into the inventory, and the one that's in the inventory, put it on the mouse, right? So, so you'd think you'd just be able to swap them around. And excuse the order of the variables here, but you think you'd just be able to swap them around. But look at what happens. Because I'm using pointers to some shit. I don't know what's happening. Something's being overwritten. But I craft the sword. I pick this up. I go to put this here. And it's supposed to swap them, right? But instead, I'm getting another... F it's overwriting to the fucking sword again. Where and how? I don't... Fuck. 
So after all those days of banging my head against the keyboard later, I figured out that somewhere along the line, the items were being passed in by reference still, after I had changed it to be a copy to avoid this very thing. I created a local variable that happened to be a reference instead of a copy that was supposed to be used from the parameter list. Uh, normally the zig compiler will tell you if you have a parameter that you're not using to avoid this kind of thing uh, but the parameter was being used somewhere else in the function so the compiler couldn't help me out and then of course after all that the item still couldn't be swapped into the old slot because they're still technically held the old item there's also a bug where the item recipes were not taking into account the total items that they needed and this was impossible to debug at first because the first iteration of this algorithm involved three nested for loops eventually this was all broken down into a neat function you see here which is much easier to manage it also just showed me that the recipes were working properly but instead the ui was broken and that was was showing the recipes in order instead of the list of craftable recipes to the player and so finally once after all of that was solved we're left with a pretty decent crafting system that gets out of the player's way and also allows for quick access uh, the one thing left to implement is scrolling when the player has more than 10 items they're able to craft uh, which is probably going to be the hardest part of this and also take the longest but this video has taken longer than i wanted to get out so i'm going to put that off until i actually have more items into the game i'm not just going to add random items that i'm not going to use later than i have have to draw sprites for what reason. I know I said there would be a bit more to look at in terms of biome work in the last video, but that's actually going to be put on hold until one of the later videos where I work on resource gathering, and that's going to include all the biome work. Right now I'm working on shaders for the game. I'm currently working on a nice water shader that's going to make the visuals really pop, and I also want to add a wind shader, maybe some leaf particles floating around to make the game world feel alive. Lighting is also going to come into play at some point, but I want to put that on hold for a little bit until I get a day-night cycle implemented. Anyways, that's going to do it for me. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.